Welcome to Briant. What's up guys, welcome to another video here today in the city of Bryansk in Bryansk Oblast. Founded in 985, this city slowly grew and eventually became the capital of Bryansk Principality in the 13th century. Over time it was passed through different principalities like Smolensk and Lithuania before eventually becoming Russian and then being Russian ever since basically Peter the Great. During the Second World War, this city was controlled by the Nazis for almost exactly two years and since then has been completely liberated and as a part of Soviet Union and then Russia. Nowadays, it's a very industrial city with lots of factories and metalworking and I can't wait to take a look around this city. Let's go. As always, we begin our tour of this city here in Lenin Square, next to the Lenin statue here, right next to Lenin Avenue. The statue of Lenin here is actually quite new from 1970, and it depicts Lenin standing with his hand placed on a stand by his side. As in most Russian cities, this Lenin Square is the home of also the local government administration buildings, as you can see behind me. These ones actually not so old and not so impressive. But this is a starting place for my tour of Bryansk. I'm going to head from here to see all the sites around the city. So let's go take a look. Behind me here, where all the people are walking, is Gagarin Boulevard, the most popular walking area here in this city. It's a pedestrianised street, about one kilometre long, which goes all the way from the embankment up to here, Tolstoy Park. You can see here it's recently been renovated, beautiful concrete slabs and trees line the whole way, and it's a really nice place to go for a walk. At the end of it, you see a huge statue of the person after whom this street is named Yuri Gagarin, next to a big granite wall. One of the most popular places for locals in Bryansk to come and walk is this, Tolstoy Park. You can see here it's very nice in this beautiful autumn colours and it's full of families and couples coming here for a walk. This park is most famous in Bryansk and in Bryansk Oblast for being lined with very intricate and interesting wooden statues which you're not going to see really anywhere else. Behind me here is the Holy Trinity Cathedral, the main cathedral here in Bryansk. Originally there was a cathedral right in this spot until the 1960s when it was destroyed by the Bolsheviks. Throughout the whole of the Soviet Union after that point there was no church in this location and then in 2007 it was decided to build a brand new church in this location, the one you can see behind me. It was finished in 2011 and services started up here in 2012. It's now the main church here in this city and the Patriarch of All Russia, Kirill, is coming to visit later this year. Behind me here is a statue of Alexander Peresvet. He was an Orthodox monk from this region in the 14th century. He died in a duel against a Tatar champion. Actually, they both 
died and that was before a big battle in this area and ever since that time this guy he Alexander Perisvet has been named as a hero and he is a hero of not only Russian Orthodoxy but also the city of France. Behind me here is the main symbol of this city, the main symbol of Bryansk, Kurgan Besmertia, the Kurgan of Immortality. It was built in 1968, it's 12 meters high with a star on top, and it's built to commemorate those people from this city, people from Bryansk, who died protecting the motherland, the Soviet Union, in the Second World War. Bryansk was occupied by the Nazis for two years and therefore many people from this city died fighting them and many of them are commemorated nowadays as heroes of the Soviet Union and therefore it's only right that they get a memorial, a huge thing right in the centre of this city and this is it, Kurgan of Immortality. I'm now in Partizan Square in the southern part of the centre of Bryansk. This Partizan Square has a statue dedicated to the liberators of Bryansk. It celebrates those people, the ordinary soldiers from this city, the ordinary people who fought against the Nazis, as well as the 60,000 partisans who operated in this city and in the forests surrounding this city in World War II. It has an eternal flame, as you can see behind me, and also on the statue it says, for our Soviet motherland. Also on this square, not only this memorial, but the local museum of local folklore. Behind me here is a statue dedicated to the international soldier. That is dedicated to the memory of people from Bryansk who died fighting wars abroad. In particular, this, mem this memorial focuses on Dagestan, Chechnya and the Afghanistan wars. Here you can see behind me there's a huge list on this side of people who died in Chechnya and Dagestan from 1994 to 2005. However, as you walk around and you see all these different wars and names, one thing I noticed, which I didn't expect here, is on this plaque right here. The last one you can see, is 2015, someone who died in Syria. is this, the Svensky or Spensky Monastery, founded in 1288 by one of the princes of Bryansk. This monastery was dedicated to the Virgin Mary and nowadays has lots of different churches inside it and I'm going to show you just a few. The oldest surviving church in this monastery is this pinky red one here, the Transfiguration of the Lord Church. Nobody knows really when it was built and completed, but records from Peter the Great's time suggest it was built around 1690. It was damaged a few times in fires, especially once in the 19th century, so it was rebuilt a few times, but this is definitely the oldest and probably the prettiest church in this monastery. In the late 16th century, the famous Svensky Market started to be hosted inside this, the monastery itself. That market was very well known and it was very rich. And because of that, this place became a place where people from all over the region came to trade goods and the money began to flow into this location, this monastery. 
However, like many churches and monasteries around Russia during the Soviet Union in the 20th century, this monastery fell into a state of disrepair and many of the very valuable icons were stolen and moved to different museums. Because of that, this didn't function as a monastery for the entire Soviet Union before being given back to the Orthodox Church and everything being rebuilt at the end of the 20th century. Guys, my time in Bryansk has come to an end. This is my train back home to Moscow and I'm going to be getting on it in about 10 minutes. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you press that like button. Every number counts. If you're from Bryansk, you're from this area or you just have a comment to make about how I portrayed this city, I'd really appreciate a comment. Maybe tell me what I missed. And if you'd like to see more videos from more Russian cities if you'd like to see more about my life in Moscow, about Moscow in general and actually about life in Russia in general I'd really appreciate a subscription there's more and more videos coming every single week. Thank you very much for getting this far and goodbye.